for now, we're going to jump right back in to the, uh, to the React Native swimming pool of success. I don't know. And, uh, and we're going to hear uh, from a React Native developer at Callstack. Everyone, please put your hands together for Shimon! Yeah, so hello everyone. Today, I would like to talk about AI uh, in React Native. And this talk won't be on yet another wrapper for GPT calls, but I would like to bring AI on another level. I would like to bring AI natively, locally, accessible without internet connection to React Native apps. Let me explain. But first, a few words about me. My name is Shimon Rybczak, and I'm a React Native developer at Callstack. On a daily basis, I'm working in a technology team where I support our R&D initiatives. I'm also maintaining React Native community CLI and a few other libraries. You can find me on Twitter or on GitHub under Shimon Rybczak handle. I'm trying to post there very often stuff that we are cooking at Callstack. So AI nowadays is everywhere. Like everyone talks about it, whenever I talk with colleagues at work, there is a new model that is faster, that is cheaper, that is better. Or I don't know, I talk with teachers at school and they ask us like, will like AI kill us or something? And there is a no brainer if I say that AI changed the way we, we work, we play with technology, and in general, we solve the problems. But the problem is that right now, everything runs in the cloud. Like cloud costs a lot of money, we need to make a run through the server and so on. But what if we could use the power of the devices that we all have in our pockets or backpacks? Actually, the power of the mobile devices is really nice. Here's a quick benchmark which compares iPhone 15 Pro, and the latest iPhone model, with iPad mini with M2 chip. And actually, on a single thread, uh, iPhone wins. So this shows that the devices that we have in pockets have really nice performance. And also, speaking about the performance, um, recently Chrome added a new feature to latest Canary version, uh, window.ai. So actually, you can run LLM model that is packed into Chrome called Gemini Nano. Um, this is like the smaller version of Gemini. And yeah, here is a quick demo of how does it work. Uh, it works really nice. It's really, really fast. Um, it answers. Uh, correctly, like it can do some uh, simple maths. And it all is locally in the browser, accessible anytime uh, and under window.ai API. And imagine that in future, every browser will adopt this directive at some point. And iterating with AI inside web apps will be really simple, like adding autocorrect features or instant answers um, when, for example, the internet connection isn't the best, uh, that's gonna be really simple. And this is absolutely like mind-blowing for me when I think about it. But what about mobile apps? Um, and let's start with a question. So who's using here React Native and on, a, on a daily basis? Please la raise your hand. All right, so quite a few people. Um, and and when I started searching about running models on mobile devices, I found out this cool project called MLC LLM. It's a universal LLM deployment engine that allows you to run LLM models everywhere, universally. Um, so how does it work? Um, basically, there are three major steps, uh, three major phases uh, that allows us to do so. So the first step is the process of weight conversion. It's the process of downloading the model from Hugging Face. If you don't know, Hugging Face is the registry for the models. Like you can think of Hugging Face as NPM for packages. Hugging Face is like registry for models. And then after we download our model and convert it to the specific format, uh, we need to compile it to the right, for, right format with some Python scripts. Uh, and here is the step of magic. And do not ask me what's, what's under the hood. Um, some really complicated stuff. But what I know is that from this step, we can get the binaries that then can be easily linked to Android and iOS app, the platform native runtimes. And from this point, when, can we, when we can access um, the model, the binaries from the Android and iOS side, we can access in React Native. 
So I had no doubts. I need to play with that in React Native. So I had to create a library. And there's a tool that we created at Callstack called Create React Native Library. Uh, it's for creating a React Native library, as the name says. And it contains all the various templates for libraries, so fabric views, turbo modules, with backward compatibility, um, and with really nice developer experience. Um, and huge kudos to Satya and Burak for maintaining it. And also, as a side note, it will be soon included an official way of creating React Native libraries via Golden Library Initiative. And when I was prototyping this, this project, I also wanted a really simple JS API. So I looked at the demo I showed you with the Chrome, and it was based on Versal AI SDK. And actually, that's all the code you need to play with AI inside your web app. So actually, you import the method called generate text or stream text from AI package owned by Vercel. Then you use the provider. Um, you call the method. You pass the provider. You can pass any provider that you want. Here, I'm using the one from uh, Vercel that is officially supported, but you can create your custom ones. And then you pass your prompt, and voila, you have your text generated by a model. And speaking of providers, here is the nice part. You can pass any provider that you want. So you can play with from AI, or maybe you can add your provider from React Native AI module that is getting a model from native runtime, then exports it to the JS site, and then you can easily pass it to uh, Versal AI SDK and just use it. That sounds cool, huh? Um, let's go with some quick demo, and let's see if, uh, if this works. Um, so yeah, let me mirror my screen. Cool. And all right, it works. Cool. Uh, so on the left side, we have a React Native app. Um, there is example app from the template library. On the right side, we have my phone uh, that is mirroring few QuickTime. Uh, and right now, let me turn airplane mode and let me disable the internet connection. Just a heads up, this Wi-Fi icon is there because I'm streaming via QuickTime, and it's always there for some strange reason. You can like think about it because there's it's like 2 p.m. right now, not 9 a.m. Um, and yeah, like I can validate if I have internet connection. Oh, sorry. Um, I have no internet connection. So let's play with my app. I can ask, hey. And right now, a LM model is executed on my device. It's working locally. And the answer is generated. And voila, we have my answer generated from on device uh, via that simple uh, API working in React Native offline. Like, I can ask, what's React Native? Um, short answer. And right now, the model is analyzing my question, like doing some C++ low-level stuff. And let's see if it will answer. And yeah, React Native is an open source mobile application framework created by Facebook. Yeah, it's, that's true. Um, I can also ask some math question. Also, if you have any question, I can ask it. Like, it's going to be fine. Or maybe fun. Um, what's flatter? Oh, no, maybe no. Uh, so yeah, if anyone has any question, I can. I can ask it. But yeah, yeah, it's working. Uh, it's a fully React Native app. Uh, here's a dev menu. And yeah, it's accessible LLM model uh, through Versal SDK on React Native. And here, let's take a look at the code. Um, so yeah, I'm calling my method get model from React Native AI package. Then I'm using generate text function from AI package from Versal. And then all I need to do is just a few lines of code. Um, call the method with my model ID that I've packed here, uh, get the prompt from text input, and that's it. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, demo worked. This is the most stressful part. Um, so yeah, let's back to the, to talk to the keynote. All right, so let's take a look on how does it work uh, in detail under the hood. So React Native AI is React Native library. Um, and under the hood, there is two native modules for each platform that I support right now. Um, there's Android. And in Android native code, I write a wrapper 
for calling the binaries that were produced via compiler. This, this, this second step uh, that was uh, mentioned uh, in the how MLC engine works. And then from Android module, um, I access binaries produced by MLC engine. Um, and here that is that SO binary that is used by Android module, which contains like tokenizer and all things for executing LLM model. And same deal on iOS. So on iOS, I execute the model, access the binaries. And actually on iOS, there is a few more binaries at that AI static libraries. that are linked during build time, so they're accessible. And what's really cool here is that then I export this module to JavaScript part, um, and I write the JS shim that that is compatible with AISDK from Brazil, and I can use all the goodies that they prepared, so generate text, stream text method. And yeah, this is really cool that I can compare the native side and JavaScript part um, really quickly. Um, but of course, there were some required polyfills. It would be too good if it would just work. Um, so there are some polyfills for streaming and all kind of things. Uh, but actually, uh, in the React Native space, it's getting better and better. Um, Svetan, who is maintainer of Hermes, which is a JavaScript engine for React Native, recently tweeted that text encoder will be natively supported in Hermes, and other polyfills that I've added are being added. So we are getting there. And what I wanted to say is that take away from this is that that's true power of React Native, that we can play, we can compose. If I wanted to play with C++ low-level stuff and then export it and have really nice um, JS API that I can plug into with a few lines of code, I can do it. This is, um, this is true power of React Native where we can leverage the possibilities that this technology gives us. All right, so what's next? What's with this project? So this is the first iteration of this project. Um, the API is not complete, um, and this is just the early prototype. Also, I need to sit down with Oscar, who had a talk earlier, and compile it on Vision OS. Um, so I actually, I can play on Vision Pro with the AI model, because Vision Pro actually have M2 chip, which is really nice and performant for executing LLM models. So it actually could wor work well. Um, and also, taking into account that Apple is working on integrating AI models into OS, maybe in the future we'll be able to plug via nice API to models that are shipped with the OS. Um, and yeah, I've just open sourced my work, so if you're curious how does it work in the detail, you can scar this QR code or go to my GitHub account and search for React Native AI repository. Um, and yeah. Uh, thank you, Geek, the GeekCon, for having us, having folks from Colstack here. And we, as Colstack, we organize the conference in a month or so uh, in Wrocław, Poland, not that far away. And yeah, if you're interested, here is a promo code, just scan it, and, and yeah, hopefully see you in Wrocław. And that will be it. Thank you so much. Yes, all right, thank you so much. Keep it going.